You know it. We know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success for 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with a comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. They'll help you whip up assets and execute tasks that used to take hours out of your workday. HubSpot Sales Hub lets you accelerate every facet of your sales operation with precision. And with over 1,400 integrations, there are tons of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. What's going on, everyone? It's Wednesday, December 21st. I'm Zachary Crockett here with Juliet Bennett-Ryla, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to be talking about why there's a shortage of children's medicine. That's leading CVS and Walgreens both to enact purchase limits, and there's also an antibiotic shortage going on. Just a hint, it's got a lot to do with the so-called triple-demic. But before we get into that, here's what else is going on in tech and business. Elon Musk is reportedly looking for a new Twitter CEO, maybe, possibly, or who knows. Anyway, he ran a poll asking Twitter users if he should step down, and it kind of backfired on him. 57.5% of respondents voted yes. He seems to have blamed the results on bots, which, by the way, he also claimed that he had gotten rid of earlier this month. But many people also believe that that poll was just for show and he planned to step down anyway. Do not pay CEO Joshua Browder said chat GPT can renegotiate bills now. In a test, it lied to Comcast agents, but Browder thinks that they've refined it a bit to remain truthful while also being very aggressive and emotional. This year's World Cup final was the most watched ever for Fox with 16.8 million viewers. That's up a whopping 158% since 2018's game. Some deflating news at Party City, the retailer is battling a helium shortage. And it's also looking at sinking stocks. It has about six months to get its average closing share price to $1 or else it faces being delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. And lastly, Wells Fargo has agreed to a $3.7 billion deal with regulators to settle charges that it took advantage of customers on their auto loans, mortgages, and bank accounts. All right, that brings us into children's meds. Julia, it sounds like it's kind of a tough time to be a parent right now. Yes. Earlier this year, we were talking about a formula shortage That helium shortage, I'm sure, is bad news for children's birthday parties. And now (laughs) we're looking at a kid's medicine shortage. Earlier this week, Walgreens and CVS both announced purchase limits on children's pain and fever reducers, Mm. such as acetaminophen, ibuprofen. And the reason why is, well, kind of interesting. We are in what people are calling a triple-demic, which is basically the flu, RSV, They're circulating. And of course, our old friend COVID is Mm -hmm. still around. So people are getting very sick. And for children, you know, the flu and RSV can be pretty not good. (laughs) Sure. Just not a fun time. Now, why is it so bad? Well, experts say it's worse than previous years because a lot of us spent the last couple of flu seasons wearing masks, avoiding people, and thus Mm. we just really weren't exposed to the usual viruses. And plus, children are usually exposed to RSV by the time they turn three, but many of today's children weren't because they were staying at home. Interesting. Okay, so there's kind of an immunity argument here. Mm -hmm. Uh, People have been cloistered a little bit at home. People have been wearing masks. They're a little bit more prone to getting common colds and flus. Right. And now we're all back out there in the world and we're getting sick. And so it's really not so much a shortage of these medicines, you know, with the formula shortage. It was obviously a plant got shut down. This is just, it's very high demand. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And in the background of all this, there's sort of another thing unfolding at the same time, which is this shortage of antibiotics. Yes. And that includes amoxicillin, which is probably the most common one that we've all heard of. Now, amoxicillin is obviously used for bacterial infections, not viral, so it won't help you with COVID or RSV, but secondary bacterial infections are common after RSV. Hmm. So that's what we're seeing there. And another thing that I found really interesting, Aaron Fox, who's a senior pharmacy director at the University of Utah, told WFYI Indianapolis that antibiotics actually are very commonly in short supply. 
Since she began tracking this in 2001, they have been among the top five U.S. drug shortages. Hmm. And the reason for this is they're an older medication. They don't cost very much. I actually just got some amoxicillin for a dental procedure, and it was $1.30. Wow. And so manufacturers just aren't incentivized to produce extra, apparently. Wow. Are you telling me an over-the-counter drug is actually less than like $500 a pill? Yes. <laughs> Shocking. <Wow. laughs> but also explains why we're out of it in some way. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and it's not just the United States. In the EU, 25 of the 27 countries are also experiencing an antibiotic. Over there, they have seen a spike in strep A infection. So bad times all around. Wow. Is there any discussion of a solution here? So I had read that the FDA was working on increasing supply, but it was very vague. <laughs> like the spokesperson was kind of like, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> but in the meantime, I did look for some advice um, I was like, what do pharmacists and doctors recommend if for some reason this happens to you or you have a kid who gets sick? The first recommendation I found was getting your flu and COVID vaccines to reduce illness should you encounter it. You can also check with compounding pharmacies, which apparently create medicines for individual patients' needs. So maybe if you can't find a children's formula, but you have access to one of those, you can have one made. And you can also ask your doctor or pharmacist about alternatives. The good news is a lot of those pain-reducing, fever-reducing medications they actually don't impact the illness in any way. They don't make it go away faster. It's just for comfort. So not great because obviously you want to make your child as comfortable as possible. But if you have like an older child with a fever, it's not dangerous for them not to have this. Of course, if you have a young infant, the advice is obviously if your infant has a fever to go to the doctor. Sure. All right, that's going to do it for us today, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. Stay safe out there, especially if you got kids. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage for you in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go check out thehustle.co slash email. We'll catch you all tomorrow.